I want to talk some about fuel dilution and regeneration cycles in diesels. Let me uh, first describe to you what this uh, system is designed to do on these diesel engines. The government, imagine that, the government is involved, has decided that diesel engines have to reduce the particulate that they put into the atmosphere. Microscopic, small ash, if you will, that is produced by burning diesel. So to do this, they've come up with this device called a uh, diesel particulate filter, DPF. Now these filters are honeycomb type devices that manage to trap these small carbon particles as waste in the filter as the exhaust goes through it. That all sounds fine, we're keeping that out of the atmosphere. The problem is, is that the particulate filter will eventually fill up with these tiny particles of carbon. So what are we going to do with this thing? How do we get rid of it? Well, what the companies designed, all three of the uh, turbo diesels we talk about, the, the Dodge, which is the Cummins, Ford Power Stroke, and the Chevy Duramax, what they came up with is a detector, pressure detector on the inlet and the outlet of this particulate filter, with the idea being that you measure the difference in pressure between these two points, and it's the differential pressure then. When it reaches a certain level, it tells the computer that the filter is now full of particulate and we've got to blow it out of there in some manner. Well, to blow it out of there, what they've decided to do is burn it out. Now, in the defense of these three manufacturers, the federal government came up with this requirement sort of right at the last minute of the last major diesel uh, exhaust emissions uh, requirement. In other words, they were moving along and it looked like they were going to set a certain standard and then they already had these engines and systems designed and they came out right towards the end. If you remember, in fact, Volkswagen uh, and I forget the other company, they did not manufacture a model. I believe it was a 2007 model because the unknown to them just wasn't worth fooling with. They didn't know what the government was going to require. They weren't going to finish the model and then be told something different. However, the other manufacturers basically got right up to the point of production and the government finally came out and said this is what's required. So they had to jump backwards and, and put this system on. And I think I'll give them that as an excuse for what they did because they want to use diesel fuel. You have diesel fuel on board, right? You're carrying that around with you. So if you can get diesel fuel into this particulate filter and get it to light off, it will raise the temperature high enough that it will burn the waste carbon away, burn it out in the flame that it creates inside that diesel particulate filter. Now, early on, there were some houses that burned down that I believe Ford Motor Company paid for because somebody backed their truck into the garage and it was up north and they were sitting there with the truck idling, getting ready to go, letting it warm up and it decided to go into the regeneration cycle and the tail, right outside the tailpipe, it reached over 700 degrees and it lit the garage on fire, okay? So they came out with cautions about do not uh, park your truck and idle it with your tailpipe close to flammable objects, okay? So anyway, once you start doing rather exotic things, you run into exotic, unusual problems that you haven't seen before. So now, how do they get the diesel? Imagine this. How do you get the diesel from the tank on the truck to the particulate filter? Well, if all of us in this room were told to do that, we'd say, well, let's see, I need, a, I need to take it off of somewhere where there's high pressure. I need to pipe it back. I need to put a jet into that uh, particulate filter, and I need to turn it on when I want to turn it on, blow some diesel in there, and burn that thing out and go on about my business, right? 
That'd work pretty good. Well, that means that you'd have to go through an engineering cycle, if you know what I mean, study, to make sure that you have the right kind of injector that the tip of it's going to be in the 700 degree fire you're burning and that it's not going to, it's going to have the safety not to feed back through and go back and blow you up and all this kind of stuff. So at the last minute, that is not going to happen. So they cheated. They really just cheated is what they did. And they said, we'll dump the diesel through the engine and it'll go down the exhaust and reach the particulate filter and it'll be raw diesel and it'll burn it out and we'll be good to go. All right, so one of the problems you run into is how are you going to do that, right? Well, you luck out in the aspect that these new injectors that are in these diesels are incredible. At full 2,000, 3,000 RPM, these things can fire five times in the cycle. So all you got to do is time one of the injections where you want it that's not really in the combustion process. So what they try to do is throw the diesel in when you're on the exhaust stroke, right? When the exhaust valve is open so that you can push the diesel through the exhaust and back to the DPF. Well, this all sounds okay, except we run into a few problems because, you know, when you throw diesel in, raw diesel in, and it's pushed out through the exhaust, it does this stuff a washing past the piston rings. And for us, oil people, where does it go? It washes right past, right down into the crankcase. Okay? Now two things you worry about in that aspect. While it's washing past the rings, is there any lubrication left on the rings? Or are we wearing the cylinder walls because we've taken the lubrication off and washed it off with the diesel? And then the other thing is, is that once we get the diesel in the, the sump, contaminated a certain amount, how much, when do we think the diesel reached condemnation level of fuel contamination that now wherever that diesel's running in the engine, not the diesel, but the motor oil's running in the engine, it's not providing enough lubrication because it's got too much diesel in it, okay? So you see the problem created by taking the shortcut to push the diesel through the engine into the DPF. Well, before I go a whole lot further, just let me tell you, they knew it was a problem because the 2011 LML, I think it's called, Duramax engine, they've got an injector in the DPF filter and they won't be going through the engine anymore. Ford and Dodge just kept going with the same practice of running it through the engine. Now, so this is a big deal at Amsoil and this is where you saw, well, let me tell you this first. What concentration do we reach? Well, we reach as much as 10 to 13 percent fuel contamination in the lubrication. Now, the old condemnation limits that were used by everybody in the business was 4%. If you had 4% or more fuel dilution, that was time to change your oil because it could be thinning your oil below the level to provide adequate protection. So good Lord, these guys are intentionally driving us to 10 to 13% in the regeneration cycle, and we're going, well, we must be ruining the trucks, right? So that's what Amsoil was doing a field study on, which I might say a, their field study, in my opinion, had some gaping holes in it the way it was done because it wasn't necessarily going to give you a scientific finding, and I discussed that with Mr. Peterson, and, and he agreed that there was a few things they'd missed, so they might have to narrow their focus. But here's the point. They got trucks, they're running oil analysis, they're testing them to see how the oil analysis looks and how the oil changes are going and how that stuff is. Now they promised to send that stuff to us and as soon as I have that information, I'll either get it on my website where you can see it or in another meeting that we have, we'll put it up here and talk about it because they've got the charts and all the diagrams. But they, he did not have that even in paper format to hand to us in the classroom. So it's coming as a package but it wasn't done yet. And he said, quite truth was, it was real time. We were looking at oil analysis they'd done the day before. Okay, so this is a real time study they're in the middle of. In the meantime, what Amsoil did is they came out and said, any of these 2007, 8, 9, or 10 that have this regeneration system installed, they limit us to normal oil drains on those diesels. Well, right now they don't know how to do anything different because if you're running around with 10 to 13% 